Hey, welcome to Backyard Bows. I'm Brandon, and man, is it good to be back in here with a bow in hand. So first, if you have not yet, go to the website, backyardbows.com. We got a couple different hats finally up. Anybody who's purchased one, thank you. Hopefully you guys have got them in the mail. Hopefully they fit and that you like them. If you've not and you're interested, get on there, buy one. It kind of helps the whole process of things, so we appreciate the support. Second, this is the bow we're gonna do the giveaway with. So the last review I mentioned, the Alaskan XT, we're gonna do a giveaway. I picked this bow for a couple different reasons. I think it's gonna fit a nice broad range of hunters, so it's good for a giveaway. I also got Bluff City where I purchased the bow to agree to setting it up with a little bit of an upgraded ready to hunt package so that whoever wins it, you'll be ready to go right when it hits you in the mail. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out there sometime this week. They're gonna dress it all up. Uh, and then we are gonna send this one month from today, we're gonna send it to one of you guys, which is perfect for a giveaway because then that gives you a ton of time over the summer to get familiar with the bow, get your arrows, get it all set up so that you hit the ground running come fall. But this is gonna be my favorite of the three that we've done. We did the Whitetail Max, watch that one if you haven't. We did the Persist, which is their flagship bow from this year. This, this one's my favorite. It's gonna fit my draw length a little bit better, okay, being a little bit longer axle to axle. It gets some great speeds kind of uh, that, that speed to comfort ratio is perfect right where I like it to be. It has a whole bunch of new features. Uh, and I think for the price, this is probably gonna be your best bang for your buck. But let's go, let's go jump right in. So we've got 33 inches axle to axle, six and a quarter inch brace height. It comes in two different draw weight options, 45 to 60 and then 55 up to 70. So this, 75, this 70 pound bow can go right under 55. So it has a really nice range of fluctuation. So with that being said, I think if you're a seasoned hunter or this is your first bow, I love that that large fluctuation in the draw weight, you can crank it down, you can develop your form, get more reps in, and then as you kind of build strength, build those muscles, you know, then you can kind of bump up that weight all the way to you want to be uh, 65, 70 going into your hunting season. So I love that, that it's that draw you know, that fluctuation in the draw weight. The draw length, it only goes from 25 out to 30. So most of these bear bows have not capped out over 30. I think there's a couple that do, uh, but this stops right at that 30 point. Gets a nice solid 335 on the IBO. Uh, I've always loved the speeds on the Alaskan. I loved the original Alaskan. This one has a little bit different cam system on it. And then it's also gonna vary from those EKO cams a little bit as well. So the riser itself, man, really cool new design. I think this is probably one of the best looking bows from them. So you got the same limb and limb pockets that you've seen on these bows for the last couple of years. Completely new riser design. They have a couple dampeners built in to the actual riser top and bottom, which are gonna help that feel in the hand. If you go to the grip, they got that bare grip, really nice and slender. I like the angle on it. To me, it's grown on me a lot. My two favorite things that they added to these bows this year is a ball bearing roller guard. Okay, so you don't have that plastic piece. This one is, I mean, these. this is so much better. It's like they heard me over the past two years. Like this is such an easy upgrade to give us consumers. Uh, to me, that makes a world of difference. That just, it, it's kind of pushing it more towards that flagship option. Really nice roller guard there. And then they built in into the riser. They got the Picatinny rail on the front. They got the integrated rest spot on the back. I love that. So again, you have like every option that we want as hunters nowadays. And people are loving that, that inlining of those accessories more and more. I love that they threw that in there. And then you got another dampener in between those, um, you know, typical bear dampeners, top and bottom. And then if you go to the cam system, okay? So you got your 25 to 30, really easy adjustment. Okay, again, for somebody who might be new, you just place that circle on whatever your draw length is, tighten your two screws down, and then take your string stop, and you're just gonna adjust it to your draw length as well. Really, really simple mechanism to use to make those adjustments, and it comes in just 80% let off. So I got that aim for a pass-through, that mule stabilizer on here, which I absolutely love. I got an old IQ sight. I always get comments on, how we dress up the bows. And to be honest, I dress them up like I was to use them in the field. So I've used that IQ site. I've picked that thing out of my, my sight box over other sites 50 times. Okay, it has a really nice sight housing, really nice pens that you can space really evenly. It's perfect for white tail hunting. You got a five pen system in there. I love it. It's old, but sometimes that older stuff, uh, you just can't seem to put it down. And then I got that Trophy Ridge rest on there. So what they're gonna do at Bluff City uh, is he does kind of an upgraded ready to hunt package. So he gets rid of the whisker biscuit. He's gonna give you a trophy ridge drop away set. He's gonna give you a little bit nicer stabilizer than the ones that you usually see on these ready to hunt packages. And then he's gonna give you a nice sight. I mean, I love what they do. He'll throw a quiver on there. This thing is gonna be ready to go. 
So as I mentioned in the last review, springtime is a little bit more demanding of me. Uh, we're trying to relocate our companies. We've expanded quite a bit, um, but I'll always find time to do these reviews. I've been so excited about this one. So this is gonna be another one of those where like, I, I just wanna get outside. We'll do a single shot assessment here inside. But, so the first thing I notice is the cable guard. You, you know, that jerk at the end, where you feel kind of that plastic piece sliding and getting stuck, ah, that smoothed out so much nicer. So it does have some nice, let, you know, it has a nice valley to it, but it's a smooth uh, kind of transition into it and through it. Now the, the pull is, let's say it's at 70, it feels like 65. Very little feel to your hand. I actually love the draw cycle on this. And I think, again, for that ratio, of what the speeds it's gonna get with my 500 grain arrow comparatively to that draw cycle, I love that. The, the, I, if you haven't seen the Whitetail Max video, check that one out. I was blown away by that one too. I think Bear really did a great job this year. You know, each one of these bows is a little bit more expensive than maybe his predecessor, but they kind of factor that in. They're giving you something for the increase in price. It's not just like the consistent increase in price that we've seen from everybody across the board for the same shit. You know, it's like they're giving you a little bit more. They're like, hey, we're gonna increase the price, but we also upgraded it for you. I think this is a fantastic upgrade from the Alaskan. Just the inlining, man, I, I think it's just a, it's just an awesome, um, just little bitty things that just, it, it kind of makes it worth that money. It's solid, it folds raw. I mean, it sets up really, really nice. There's not much waiver to the bow, and, and to be honest, I'm really surprised with the feel, the shot cycle, that feel in your hand, it's just minimal. It's just minimal. For the speeds this is gonna get, I feel like that, that's a, a really nice package all around there, touching on all fronts. And then again, it's just, it's a super slick looking bow. I, lo I love the riser design, I love the way it looks. I got the uh, stone gray. There's a couple different other camo color options that you can mix match the limbs in the riser, but let's go outside. Let's start ripping them. All right, so on to, the best part if you if you haven't followed us we have a archer's paradise here okay we have a couple different spots where you can set up and shoot we have a whole bunch of different 3d targets all throughout the valley in the backyard we'll start over here we'll work our way through kind of everything uh, so right here we got a box underneath us elevated up shooting downhill that tree stand um, element to these shots we got a boar at 25 and then we got a couple different quartering bucks at 30. We're just gonna start letting them go. Now I got one buck quartering away from me, which we'll start at and then we'll shoot at one quartering to me. I'm not gonna lie, I l the draw cycle on this, I think longer axle to axle, the draw cycle is really, really nice. I, I think I like it more than the Alaskan. We do have a little bit different cams on here than the other one. I think the Alaskan had a hybrid cam on the on, on that one. But it's really, really smooth. I think that roller guard has something to do with that as well. Uh, and a 60, when you get up to 70 pounds and you're pulling 70 consistently, a 65 pound feel, I mean, that's bonus. So now we'll go to a, a butt quarter and two meat. Ooh, that one felt good. It, again, that bear, all the bears to me have what seems to be like a little twang in the shot. Uh, but as you saw with the Whitetail Max, uh, that one ended up being on the quieter side of some of the bows that we've shot, or like right under the, below that average, which was nice to see. So we'll see when we go inside with this one. But let's go over to the gazebo. We'll shoot a whole bunch of different ranges all the way out to 50. So another review that we put out recently was the Mule Stabilizer here. Super, I mean, I, I love this thing the more and more I mess with it. Whole bunch of cool features. Has this little hook here. You can set it right on your pants, your belt to glass. Uh, all kinds of stuff keeps your cams and your sight and everything protected off the ground check this review out if you haven't seen it or haven't heard of these or have seen them and wondered what is that love the mule stabilizer um, recent review that we just put out on it um, absolutely love mine just moved it from bow to bow it really balances some bows out better but every once in a while you find one you're like wow that feels really good um, but let's go, we'll go turkey through that new bighorn ram up on the top at 50. 20 through 50, five yard increments, we're gonna climb this 3D ladder. So we have the wisteria 
don't know if you can see it, the wisteria all along this thing is just in bloom. It's, it's like paradise. Now you can sit over here and shoot all day. I mean, I could shoot at a bag in an open field all day, but then when you make something like this and kind of create this, uh, this space, it just, it's easy to get those daily reps in, especially this time of year come spring. So I'll go coyote. Ooh, right through there. That coyote is not going far. Now we'll go feeding buck at 30. Each one of these is like five yard step ups. I like starting at the turkey and just kind of walking my way all the way up. <laughs> I think I might have hit that rebar. Especially with that deer's being head down. Uh, you know, that deer's gonna drop probably two and a half inches. That'd be a hard shot, but for those of you who didn't like that shot, we'll shoot another one. Uh, now let's go to the gray wolf at 35. All right, so now let me set up on the bears and we'll do the mama bear in the full draw stall. So now we got my favorite Reinhardt target I have, which is that, ah, I guess that new one, the big horn is one I like too, but I love this bear. It's like a life-size bear at 40. Let me shoot one more. That bear probably takes the most arrows And another thing, when pe people comment on a lot, I didn't know this until I started making videos. Uh, you got a ton of people who critique you. Switch it over that little bear. Um, they always talk about my footing. So like my feet should be farther apart. You're right, they probably should be. I would get a little bit more stability from it. But 95% of my shots are gonna be from a tree stand, usually a small platform really high up in a tree. Uh, so I naturally have started to assimilate the amount of space that I have from that platform. And I think that's good to do. I think it's good to kind of really put some thought, you know, if you're always shooting a wide stands two feet on the ground and then you get up in a tree, that's a completely different experience. Uh, so remember that, especially if you're new, okay, new to archery, new to hunting really try to imitate what you do in practice to what you would do in the field. And as you gain more experience, you'll get more perspective on what that actually is. So now we'll go full draw stall, little black bear, 60 second hold. This is our stability test. So at home, you can do this easily, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. Try to be as still as you can, as if something's spooked looking right at you. You can't move a muscle, see how long you can hold that bow, see how stable the bow stays on its own, kind of how much it helps you. Sometimes bows will do the work. Sometimes you will see within even 15 seconds that that pen starts to float. That's what I don't want to see. So this is kind of, to me, the best stability test out there. Um, you know, and, and test it exactly how you would with the draw weight that you're going to want to hold at. Um, because man, it happens more often than not that you get in a position where you end up holding. So uh, let's go, we'll go 60 seconds. Breeze, absolutely breeze to hold back. Never one pulse to the cams. It's at 80%, so there's not lots of let off options here with this, but man, that felt really, really good. So now we got that kicking buck from a different angle. We were shooting at it, I think it's 30 from up on the porch and it's quartering away from me. Now it's quartering to me at 45. You really got to kind of hug that shoulder uh, with it being at the angle it is. The anatomy's kind of, you know, getting slimmer and slimmer. So you really got to hug that shoulder tight. I like that one, but let's try to get one a, a hair lower. Uh, 
Mm. All right, so now let's go to this new big horn up on top at 50 yards. And the last, I don't know what it was, maybe it was a short I made, or it was the last review. Somebody said, that's not really a tight group at 50. I'm gonna put four shots on that ram. These are the first four shots I've taken at that 50. If I can get them on a plate, I'm okay right now, okay? Uh, as I was to go throughout my day, and as we shoot this thing more, that group gets tighter and tighter, and as you practice, you get tighter and tighter. You get these guys online that shoot these perfectly tight groups that's taken 1,000 reps with that bow. Yeah, okay. Uh, you, you take some time, you know. These first shots with any bow, I, if I can get them on a dinner plate up there, I'm happy, okay? That's kind of what I'm looking for. Let's go 50 yards, big ram. Mm, that's on the money. First shot at 50 right there. Money shot. You can't get a better play shot than that. Now, something else I'll do at 50, I like to do it at 50 too, called a quick 50. Another little made up stability test. See how fast you can get those pins to dial down. Give yourself like three or four seconds. Draw, dial them down, release within a short amount of time. So, uh, you know, it, it's harder than it looks, but also you will see a drastic difference in some bows. So some bows will tend to dial down very quickly. Got a stink bug on there. And then some bows uh, maybe take a minute. Okay, so that's kind of another little differential stability test you can do. So let's do another one, another quick 50. You know, so I love both of those tests for stability. Okay, uh, otherwise stability because most of the Eric is on our part as the hunter. It's kind of a hard test and a hard area to kind of distinguish separation between bows and stability but i think those two give some good clarity and separation if you do tons of bows in a row like we do here you really start to see a big difference um, uh, between each bow with those two tests so let's go inside let's run it through the speed test we'll do a sound i'm going to shoot the shit out of this thing all day and then we'll come back and we'll give it a grade at the end and then we'll let you know how and what you can do to get an entry to win in one month I've been dying to see what this one gets. I loved the speed of the original Alaskan. It's just a just an awesome speed for that bow. That was one of the first bows we reviewed up here, Bear Alaskan. It was the sixth bow we reviewed. It got a 274 with my 500 grain arrow. Okay, so right under that 280. So right here we have a 500 grain arrow, 300 spine full metal jacket, 500 grains, 70 inch or 70 pound, 30 inches, 80% let off. That's 280, I knew it would be a hair faster. That is awesome. Let's go ahead and shoot one more. So 285, I'm gonna give it the eight out of 10. Now people always ask, why are you looking to get in the 280s? Honestly, you know, you, you test so many different bows at your draw length, draw weight with a slightly different arrow fluctuation, you're gonna start averaging in, you know, a certain range. At my draw length, at 70 pounds, the 280 seems to be the average from all of those, you got 70% of them that, that lie right in there, which is what you wanna see. Some are a little bit slower, some are a little bit faster. Faster is bonus, slower as long as it's not too much is okay, but you want to just lie right into a range. So for anybody who's out there at 30 inches shooting 70 pounds, that's that's where you wanna be. Uh, that is a just an awesome speed for anything hunting. I mean, anything. Uh, let's go 400 grains or 440 grains. This is a 400 spine full metal jacket, so a little bit lighter. Me those high 290s. That's 306. That is humming. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is a really nice speed for that lighter grain arrow. I'm telling you, these Alaskans are some of the best 
smooth to speed ratio on the market. We haven't even talked about or factored in the price of this bow yet, which is just gonna blow you away at the very end. I mean, it, you cannot beat this bow. You get everything that you get on most flagship bows. You get an extremely nice ratio to speed and comfort, which is the goal of compound bows. And they give it to you at a price that's unbelievable. Uh, you know, when we talk about this top five budget bow, the next round that we'll do, it's gonna be really, really hard to beat this. So this is a 300 spine, same arrow, but with a brass insert. If it's gonna be anywhere in the 266, we'll be happy. 266, that is just, I mean, it's awesome. All right, so sound test. Um, here's another little two cents on sound. And, and my little two cents here and there are, are mostly for beginners. If you are interacting with somebody who makes a huge difference on sound, okay, my, my solution is to know the anatomy um, and to know the reactions of the animal that you're gonna be hunting. Okay, so what I mean by that is if, if you're worried about the sound of your bow, uh, and you're worried about the movement, that kind of like after movement, after shot movement from the animal, which is usually a drop, okay, or a sidestep, knowing the anatomy and shot placement is, you know, extremely important. Finding a bow that is one decibel quieter than another, to me, that's not the route. That's not the move. Spending more time understanding that after shot movement, your shot placement, the reaction of the animal, all of that is vitally more important than whether your bow is one decibel, you know, quieter than the next bow that, that you're interested in. All right, that shouldn't be a deciding factor to me. I like the, all the tests we do. I like the sound test. I like seeing where bows stack up. And more importantly, I like understanding if companies are just kind of bullshitting about marketing. You know, the quietest bow out there. I love that statement. To me, that's more why I do this than to find the quietest bow. None of that matters. I'll shoot a bow that's averagely in the 90s like we've seen. None of that matters to me. Uh, I will factor in movement, after shot movement, most of the time. So we have our phone app decibel reader there. Kind of does a recording of all the different bows we can compare to, go back and look at. And then we got our visual up here for you guys. So 89, that's really nice because what I'm hearing, which is this kind of loose twang type sound from these bare bows, it's still not, you know, um, factoring in on that decibel reader in a negative way. So even though they all sound similar to me, they're all right in there under 90, which is nice. I think the white tail max was very similar. And I'll show you how we have this set up. I'll turn the camera around you kind of see we got that bag way outside the garage so that one's right at 90. you know but the my comment on the sound of these bare bows is what it is if you shoot a whole bunch of different bows you know right after each other most likely all of those bare all of those hoyt they all have a similar sound the elites you know you factor in all the dampening mechanisms that they reuse on these bows everything about them they kind of come up with this general sound that they they pitch. These ones, it always makes me recheck if something's loose, the sound that comes off them. But as you can tell with the decibel reading, they're really, it's not negative. They're still under 90, which is nice. So if you turn this around right here, you know, here we are. You got that bag outside that garage door, you know, so that's nice and far away. So this is picking up the bow. The, the sound test is for some of you out there who are interested in it. To me, I never factor in how loud or quiet a bow is. That's just, I've never, ever factored that in, never, whether or not I use one or not. That's just my personal experience, field experience. To me, uh, that really nice comfort and speed ratio uh, and the overall stability of the bow is 10 times more important. I can make up for the sound of a bow by anticipating after shot movement on the critter placement, anatomy, stuff like that. So that's my two cents on sound weather. In the summer when it's blistering hot, I can only shoot so much. And then when it's freezing, I can only shoot so much. But springtime, I'll, I'll get so many shots through review. 
Uh, there's so much to do in the yard here. We have like extensive gardens. It's like I can garden, shoot, garden, shoot all, all day. I can do this. I probably shot 20 dozen shots through this today. The draw cycle, I loved more and more and more. This bow opened up so nice, but man, such a breeze to shoot. The draw cycle got better and better where I said it was more like a 65 pound pole. It got down to where it felt like it was like 63. Uh, and then you saw the speed, so that's where we'll start. So 285, best speed you can get, you know, for, 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 for that ratio where you're wanting something really comfortable, but you also want to bring the heat. I mean, you can't beat this. Um, 285, so we got the eight out of 10. Uh, absolutely love that. Gave it an eight for quality as well. I think it's a, a, tot, a, a tad notch up from the Whitetail Max. Uh, just, you can tell the construction of the riser. It's a little bit bulkier. I think it's just really nice quality. Um, all around. I, I absolutely love the quality of this bow for the price, which we'll talk about at the end. Uh, I think you're getting with the cable guard, all of it. I think you're getting a very, very well-made bow. Appeal, I gave it a nine. All of the different mixing and matching of camel options, the riser, the curve of the riser, all of it. It's just a very, very, very pretty bow to the eye. Uh, I, I love the, the built-in dampeners. The whole thing is just really smooth looking. Um, I love it the way it's set up now with the mule stabilizer. Once again, if you haven't seen it, go check that out. Love those, love what he's doing. Can't wait to see what else he has next. And then you got technology. Uh, I think I gave it a seven. Again, one up from the Whitetail Max just because of some of the, the, the options for the inlining into the riser. Again, you split some hairs. You kind of got to give credit where credit's due. The, the actual cam system is very basic, but uh, I, I love the options. Again, when, you, when you, you make decisions with factoring in the price, everything kind of gets one, one extra point here and there. And then you get a nine. So I've given like the past like six bows a nine out of a 10 on performance. And, and that's not coincidence. I mean, again, I'm giving grades factoring it all in. So was this as stable? as maybe another bow, no, but did the smoothness of the draw and the stability that came with this, with the price factored in, deserve a nine for the performance? 100%. I mean, we're talking less than half of the cost at some of the other bows that we've reviewed in here lately. Uh, say the Mach 30, you know, this is three times less than that bow, nine per performance, same with the Mach 30. I mean, just for those of you who ask, do you need the latest and the greatest, uh, which we get that question all the time, which blows my mind. I feel like that's common sense. No, of course you don't. There's so many different options out there that will perform just as fine, depending on how much work and effort you put in with the system and the, and the setup that you're using, uh, you'll have success. Uh, just kind of, you know, it's 90% you and the practice and the reps that you put in with whatever you decide to choose. Uh, but right off the bat, as you can see, this thing is a breeze, absolutely breeze to shoot. So you got a 41, you times it by two, you got that 82. Does get a makeup point for being uh, between 500 and 1,000. I wish it was right under 500 like it used to be, maybe that 499 range so we could give it those three makeup points. But uh, so you got an 84 out of 100. I mean, this is just a awesome grade for a great bow. You know, $550. You buy the, the ready to hunt package, you tax on like an extra 100 bucks. And if you go to Bluff City where we're gonna set this thing up for you guys, he'll give you that premium upgraded uh, ready to hunt package for an extra hundred bucks. 650 out the door with an absolute killing machine. I mean, you, you can't beat it, really. This has been one of my favorite bows to review this year. This it will definitely land. Now where it lands in the top five budget bows from this year, um, we, we don't know yet, but I mean, it, it's definitely gonna be up there in the top three guaranteed. Um, so reminders go get yourself a hat if you if you have not and you want to support the channel it's an easy way to do it uh every little bit helps we are trying to build a channel that you guys can go to knowing that things are field tested uh thoroughly tested honest um you know reviews given that's kind of what we want especially for new hunters just a, a platform where they can go and get some good honest information that's unbiased uh, and we're going to keep this thing going. Who knows where it's going to end up taking us, uh, but we don't have any plans on stopping. We love the whole process. We love getting our hands on these different bows. We're blessed to do so. Um, and then make sure you go down to the description, follow the steps that you need to take to get yourself an entry one month from now 
This is coming to one of you lucky winners. We love giveaways. We love sharing everything that we get in house. Make sure above all, you don't buy a bow off a single bow review, get into a bow shop, try several different bows. One will stand out more than others, I promise. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram to get all of the updates on what reviews come next. Above all, get those reps in on the daily. We'll see you next week.